Thank you so much, Claire, and allow me to thank you very much as a master of our ceremony here. You've done a fabulous job guiding us through the timetable. So, there was going to be a video, but we skipped the video in the interest of time. So I'm totally lost as to the synchronization. Yeah, somebody's happy because they want to go and play golf or do something else. So, <laughs> this is one of the highlights uh, of each edition of Sintra, and it is the Young Economist Prize. It has been a great pleasure to have all the 10 fin finalists. I think the 10 finalists should be joining me, shouldn't they? Because if I say thank you to them, they should be around. So come, please. Thank you really so much to all of you because you have shared with us your research. Uh, many of us in the audience, highly qualified and respected academics, governors, and experts of all kinds have actually been impressed by your presentation, by the depth of the work that you did, and by the clarity with which you've explained it to us. So thank you so much for having done that. And congratulations because as you know, there are 10 of you, one will have the prize. But think about the other 70 who are pre-qualified to also be amongst the finalists and who have not made it. So you are really the la creme de la creme on this occasion, and you should be very proud of that. But of course, um, a jury was at work. And the jury was uh, composed of Jordi Galli, Ellen Ray, Jiri Slachalek, and Isabel von Stinkist as well as Philip Hartzman. So all of them have worked hard, have read all your papers, have scratched their head to decide exactly who was the best and who should be the, the finalist. You have to know that they had to go back, skip lunch for most of them, and had a special session to finally decide which one would be the prize winner. And that speaks to the quality of the work that you have done uh, all together. But one of them has to be selected as the jury said. Jury took note also of the votes that we all uh, um, registered, and it was with some trepidation that they decided that this Young Economist Prize, uh, who is 10,000 euros, and a trophy that will be presented to me in a microsecond, thank you for the trophy, <laughs> thank you, that I announced that the winner, and I would like to ask you to step forward as I mention your name, is Svetelina Nenova. Please step out. Congratulations. For those of you who don't remember her presentation, uh, is, Svetelina is a PhD student at the London Business School, and uh, she has produced a paper named Global Original Safe Assets, Evidence from Bond Substitution Patterns. She provides novel empirical evidence on the portfolio rebalancing of mutual funds in international bond markets and on monetary policy spillovers around the globe and across Euro area countries. This work provides valuable insight about the transmission of monetary policy and sets an excellent example for young scholars to do highly policy relevant work using European data. Warmest congratulations to you. If you don't mind coming to receive your award. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, President. Uh, it's, it's quite a heavy one, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for this award uh, to the President, to the Selection Committee, to anybody who voted for my paper or just stopped by to talk to me uh, at the poster. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm uh, uh, very deeply honored and also quite surprised given the amazing uh, competition. Um, uh, and. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who's guided me on uh, during my research journey. 
Um, and I, I want to also say that the, the, this project was very much motivated by what I saw in the financial markets following the global financial crisis, what I saw in European sovereign debt markets during the, uh, the crisis after that in Europe. Uh, there was increase, an increase in uh, market fragmentation and we didn't, uh, I th and I thought with more granular data, international data, both on Europe and the US, I could fill this gap to some degree by understanding how this market fragmentation arises and uh, to be able to track it a bit better. So I'm glad that this has, a, uh, uh, has done a full, full circle and is now useful to policymakers as well. Uh, and I think really this is uh, my takeaway from the, from the conference here is really that the reward for us all is that uh, we can kind of see very tangibly what, is the, what are the policy implications uh, and, and what is the usefulness to society of what we have spent many years working on by ourselves. Uh, so I think uh, that's a reward for us all and please uh, join me in a round of applause for everybody uh, who's for all the finalists. So you can stay here on the podium. I'm just going to say a few words by way of closing because this is now the last, uh, last few minutes before you are released and you can go and do something else. So I, I simply want to thank all participants uh, in, in that uh, conference. And I have to say that you've identified very beautifully the relationship between the academic work and, uh, and uh, the, the drawing from that academic world uh, that policymakers can actually benefit from. And it's not so often uh, the case of the time that policymakers can, in a spirit of you know, congenial, convivial, and occasionally consensual, not always, can actually compare notes, share views, pick the brain of those who spend a lot of their time thinking about the, uh, the, the decisions that we have to make on, on a regular basis, sometimes not always with the benefit of uh, the deep research and the deep analytical work that is done by many of you in this room. So thank you very much for that. I thought that the conference actually provided a great uh, opportunity to consider the past, to analyze the present, and to plan for the future. And incidentally, Lesetje, I have no, where are you? Lesetje, there you are. You know, my first G G20 actually was in South Africa. It was not a leaders summit, it was a finance minister's summit about 15 years ago. And you were the doers. Uh, from that G20 groups. So the items that you've identified, uh, the two items that you've identified for the financial uh, channel, I'm certain that you will take them further. And I very much hope so, because in particular in relation to cross-border and cross-currency payments, there's a lot of work that has been done, but now we need to just act upon it and, and take it further. And it's not just for the benefit of having good control of the system, but it's also for the benefit of all those who are paying massive fees and commissions on the remittance from developed to uh, soon to be as developed countries. So when I look at all the papers and the contributions that we've, we've had the benefit of, uh, when I look at this past uh, bucket, if you will, you've helped us analyzing and dissecting the main feature of past policy cycles and identifying the drivers of the inflation surge in the post-COVID environment. Okay, we will continue debating probably for long as to whether it is demand or whether it is supply or whether it is a bit of both and which one of the two prevailed over the other. And some of us might even say, look, it was just so big anyway that it didn't really matter in terms of what policy measures we had to take. But I hear what you say, Christine, about the fact that Christine is gone. No, she's still here, wonderful. I hear what you say about having to really get to the bottom of the, of the roots of it. Um, turning to, uh, and, and thank you, by the way, because I thought that was really a beautiful gesture on your part to say we've accumulated all this amount of data since 1880, and it's all out there for you if you want to prolong research and do more work. I think it's, it's, it's really a, a, a wonderful uh, way of, of sharing the work that you've done and taking it further, and I'm sure some will do it. Turning now to the present, um, you know, you helped us identify what are the lessons from the past for current policy and how to think today about the natural interest rate role uh, in the current environment. 
uh, and I don't know if John is still around, Claudio is certainly still there, and uh, uh, Stephanie, and uh, I can't see all of them. Yes, there you are, both of you. Thank you very much uh, under the leadership of Philip for uh, helping us with trying to sort out exactly uh, how it can, it can help and how we can try to identify the gender of angels with a level of certainty that will take us to the star. Thank you, Claudio, for this uh, remembrance. We have the same in French, by the way. Le sexe des anges. Um, I think you've also helped us identify what are the risks to the financial system. The last panel was certainly a case in point. And uh, one panel that was a little bit unusual, probably, under the guidance of, of Isabel, was the way in which geopolitical fragmentation, geopolitical development, political development, actually matter enormously and can uh, raise issues going forward for all of us uh, policymakers. As to the future, I know some of you uh, will debate for long as to whether this uh, paper on biodiversity and the natural capital was relevant or not, or whether we were going way beyond what is the natural remit of central banks. I think that is the beauty of this kind of conferences, to actually step out and move into the future and I think history will judge, and I bet you that in 10 years' time, we're celebrating, by the way, the 10th anniversary of Sintra, but in 10 years' time, if some of you are still around, I won't, for that matter, because we have you know, terms that are very uh, finite. Uh, some of you will actually be surprised that these kind of research and work is actually critically important and should not be treated casually, including by central bankers, but that's another matter that we can debate uh, further. Improvement of productivity, the role of artificial intelligence, all of that was also brought into a, a, a you know, sort of projecting into the future what the impact will be, and for all of that, again, thank you so much. We will take it like bees pick up the flowers that you are in order to make honeys. We understand that pollination is important, sorry. No, I am focused on price stability and obsessed with it, rest assured. So before we all go away to other things before we have dinner tonight all together, I would like to recognize a number of uh, people and sometimes I will just mention categories. So first of all, I would like to thank all members of staff of the ECB who have worked long and hard to make that conference a success. And for those of you who only think about those who have produced research, who have harnessed the intellectual capital of the contributors. It's not just that, it's critically important, but it's also who plans for lunch. How do you organize the, uh, the, the, the ways in which those sequences happen you know, seamlessly, without any problem, and how you all satisfied from you tippy toes uh, to your hair, which goes in 12 directions with the wind. Um, I would like to thank my executive board colleagues, all of them who have been tremendous leaders uh, of the various panel discussions that they've, uh, they've monitored, moderated, and participated in. Thank you so much to all of you. All contributors of their research papers, sometimes 90 pages long, granted, but fascinating and really interesting and important. And I would like to give a special th thanks to two categories identified by nationality. And that will go first of all to our American friends, because despite the fact that tomorrow is Independence Day, they nonetheless accepted to spend the day before Independence Day with the crowd of the most independent people on the planet, central bank governors. So thank you for that. You've uh, really ungraced us with your presence, and uh, I hope that you will celebrate the 4th of July with, with joy and rejuvenated and excited by what you've learned uh, today. The second category that I would like to think is um, our um, UK colleagues, because some of them have a little business to conduct tomorrow. It's not about Independence Day, it might be about transformation. But I would like to distinguish amongst that group of uh, British colleagues, in particular, uh, Andrew Bailey, who, have, who has mastered the consumed art of saying nothing for three days. And for that, I would like to congratulate you. <laughs> So 
So thank you to all of you. You're now free to do whatever you care to do. And we are all seeing each other uh, for an exciting dinner that our friend Mario Centeno has organized for us. And Mario, thank you for your hospitality and your beautiful Sintra one more time. It's been a joy. Thank you, Mario. Thank you.